Is it sporty? Sure. Will it gap dominators and gauntlets? No. Is it culturally relevant? Is it 2003? Is it the topic of this episode? Yes. You won't have to look far to find a bullock and prairie in the wild. Whether it's puttering through the LS gridlock, hiding behind two elegies at a JDM car meet, or on the used lot for less than a month's worth of rent, they're out there. Bullockin, as of current, is a flash-in-the-pan phenomenon of a car company. They haven't made anything before the prairie, and presumably nothing since. Bullockin is kind of like a Korean pop star who made one song and took the world by storm for a month, and then fell out of the public spectacle faster than whatever the last environmental crisis was. The Prairie gets a bad rap. No, not that kind of bad rap. A bad reputation. Because of the various groups of people who get behind the wheel of these relatively cheap accessible cars. You've got the car guy folk who want nothing more than to disembowel their foreign automobile with blister body kits, hood vents, and the cheapest spoiler they can get their hands on. There's also the family who bought the car for that fabled new car smell. Part after part, this family has kept this car alive for reasons one might define as automotive Stockholm Syndrome, the car itself becoming a thought experiment into the metaphysics of identity. And then there's all the rest which remain on the road or are being resold as future classic desirable sports cars, because they were in a movie franchise that's been imprinted into the brain of every child between the ages of 12 and 30. <sighs> Here we go. This is not a sports car. Neither is this. This is a compact car which has been made to look sporty. The major difference between the two here is the build quality. If you want to race them, that's fine. But the moment you chomp off the exhaust and chuck it through an intersection of a residential area at 3am, you've demonstrated to the world that you have no use for your frontal lobe and haven't since grade school. Now that I've shot my own foot by angering a quarter of anyone who likes cars, let's talk about this Korean one-off compact on its own. What's there to say about the Prairie? It's got a relatively cozy four-cylinder with dual overhead cams in the bay, but it seems to have taken a page out of De Classe's handbook on how to mount it. Perhaps Bullockin didn't have the money to fit it sideways? Nothing's for sure. The interior is decent for the car too. No sickly grey bubble dash or obnoxious branding. It even comes standard with a mind-mocked radial at the Primo. What's surprising about the Bullockin is they weren't about to give you a run-of-the-mill trunk. Instead, your sporty compact comes as a three-door hatch. So the trunk has enough space to carry everything you own after the divorce. Just don't let it open all the way in low spaces. And if we're going to talk about styling, we'll have to talk about the ridiculous factory diffusers and the preposterous GT-inspired center brake light. It's almost like there was a designer for both ends of the vehicle. The front was fabricated to feel friendly and flamboyant, while well, it seems the back was shaped to seem serrated and slender. And the midsection appears to be the seams of these two competing philosophies. While the lines in the cabin seek to round out the car, the quarter window and accent trim are sharp to the touch. We also can't overlook the sheer size of these wheels. Just like the Asbo, there's more rubber in a box of pencils than there are in any one of these high profile tires. But these nitpicks are neither here nor there. Where a car like the Prairie really matters is in its ride quality and basic performance. For being a front-wheel drive with industrial rollers for wheels, the ride quality is standard. The Prairie retains decent acceleration and competitive fuel mileage, but will spin out if you give it too much foot. The transmission is smooth and the handling feels responsive, even for a car nearly 20 years old. These are all relatively part of the course for an established company's fourth or fifth iteration of a certain model, but you have to remember, Bullockin hasn't made anything else. For a first attempt at a car, this thing isn't half bad. What the Bullockin is, then, is complicated. A car heralded by people who believe them to be economy sports cars, which is an oxymoron, those who can't be bothered to remember the make or model of their car, and those of us who need four wheels for barely four digits. The car itself is just as divisive as the people who drive them. The lines are borderline bipolar, ranging from accentuated to angsty, yet it all pulls itself together into one package. The Prairie might be categorized as a commercial dud responsible for wiping Bullockin off the map, but I'm convinced this isn't the last we've heard of our Korean friends. <laughs>